In this video, I'm going to show you the most common BAE systems interview questions and help you plan some good answers to these. So we'll look at first how you go about passing a BAE systems interview. So the first thing you want to do is know the questions that they're most likely to ask. And this video will reveal some of the most common ones that people have reported in their interviews. The next thing is to have answers prepared for these in advance. So thinking about what questions people have been asked about in the past and then having a rough idea of how you're going to answer those if they come up. Make sure you bring all the documents that they ask for because you're applying for a often security cleared role or going to places for the interview that are higher security and they may actually refuse to allow you into the interview if you don't have the required documents and also it looks very unprofessional. The next thing is make sure you dress appropriately have examples ready in advance. So a lot of the BE systems questions are like, tell me about a time you did this or give me an example of when you've done that. And if you have examples ready, it's going to help a lot. And we're going to share with you a list of the most common questions where they ask for examples that have previously been reported. And then as a general rule for every interview, but especially here, don't suggest anything that is dangerous or unethical because that could immediately mean that they have to rule you out because they will be taking notes throughout the interview. And if you say anything dangerous or unethical, they'll be writing that down. That goes on their records. And if they hired you, that could make them look very bad. So absolutely do not do that. So let's look at a really important question, which is what do you know about BAE systems? And to answer this, you have to make sure you get the basics right, that you actually know the business. And then to really impress them, you want to have knowledge that most people wouldn't have, that you've actually went beyond what most people know about the company. And I'm going to give you some great tips on how you can prepare for this question and share with you the key facts that you can take to an interview. So the first thing is they are an armed security and aerospace focused defense contractor. That's a simple description of what their business does. They are based on engineering innovation and operational excellence. That's a phrase they like to use to describe themselves. They provide world-class defense capabilities to lots of different customers. They have businesses based in land, air, sea, and now cyber businesses as well. They predominantly work in the UK, US, Australia, and Saudi Arabia, but they have a wider presence as well. They are well known for the F-35 program, the Eurofighter, the Astute class submarines, and the QE class aircraft carriers are some recent large projects that they've been involved in. It's a good idea to look on their website and look in the news. What is BE Systems currently working on? What are their big contracts? What are their big projects? And have an awareness of that. They are headquartered currently in London, and the company was founded in 1999 by the merger of these two companies. Of course, the companies that make up BAE Systems are a lot older than that, but BAE Systems itself traces itself back to 1999 as that entity. They also have support and services. So a big part of their business isn't selling just new equipment. It is maintaining it and supporting the users to use it effectively and ensure that it's working as intended. They have some ESG and net zero commitments that they've made publicly, and it's worth knowing exactly what they are. They, of course, change. They've got a corporate social responsibility report where they have all those things that they like to discuss and those commitments. A great tip for really being well prepared is to read BE Systems annual reports, and they also make investor presentations. It's best to watch the presentations or read the presentation slides first because it gives you a lot of information very quickly. And then if you read the most recent annual report, particularly the chairman's report or the CEO's uh, report towards the beginning, it gives you a nice flavor of what the business is focusing on and what they're currently doing. And that will ensure that you're well prepared and say in your interview that you have actually read these documents and a few things that you've taken from them. And that shows that you're well prepared. So feel free to screenshot or take any notes from this. Take the time to read the annual report and the presentations. After about an hour of reading those, you'll have a really great understanding of the business and a good thing to talk about in the interview. 
The next question is, how do you manage a heavy workload? And a top tip is to have an example of this ready because they might ask, tell me about a time that you had to manage a very high workload. So it's not just how you manage it, it could be for an example. So think about a time you've had really high workload and have that example ready to go. So if you've got a heavy workload, the first step is to prioritize effectively. One technique that's really good at doing this is the Eisenhower matrix. So you might want to look that up and be able to discuss how you could use that. A good phrase to use is I'm highly productive, focused employee with a strong work ethic. So you can handle a high workload because you work very hard and you're productive, you actually get stuff done. So you can actually get through a lot that you use short, medium, and long-term planning. So you know what you have to do immediately, you know what you have to do in the medium term, and you know things that are long-term. So when you've got heavy workload, those things can be put to one side at the minute so you can focus on the more immediate needs. That you anticipate pinch points so you know the times where you're expecting to have a high workload or where deadlines are coming in. And so you've planned to anticipate those to ensure that the workload is manageable at those points and that you are a good communicator and you collaborate with others to ensure that everyone knows exactly where you're up to, that they can anticipate any issues or if there's going to be inevitable overruns because of other problems that people know about that well in advance and that contingency planning can be done. So talk through each of the th those things on the list, have an example ready to go, and you'll be ready to answer that question. A question they also like is, where do you see yourself in five years time? And you want to have a rough sort of idea, a rough outline of where your career might go but you're obviously not going to know exactly. So talk in very broad terms. Things that go in a good answer is it should be reasonable and believable. It should be within the realms of possibility. A good idea is to study typical careers on LinkedIn. So look at someone who was in the role you're applying for five years ago. What have they done? What progress have they made in that time? Be sensitive to the um, interview context. So who is interviewing you? A bad way to answer this is talking about being the boss of the person who's interviewing you or saying in five years time, I want to be doing your job because that person might have taken 15 years to get to the level that they are at. And you're saying, I'm so much better than you. I can do your job effortlessly in five years. That's going to be potentially insulting. So don't talk personally about the other people that are interviewing you. And a good thing to get in your answer is to take advantage of opportunities that you can get with the company. Bad answers are things that are absurd, that are not well thought through. So if you've not planned for this and you try and make something up on the spot, it's not going to be very convincing. There's no development, so you're not talking about what you're going to learn and what you're going to do to get there. It's entitled or it's just irrelevant. Don't talk about anything that's not relevant to your professional life. They don't want to know about some personal goals you've got that are not anything to do with your job. They want to focus on the career-based goals. And you want to be talking about earning any progression or what you're going to learn and develop rather than just saying, in five years, I'm going to be this, I'm going to achieve this as if it's just an expectation. So a typical career progression might be something like graduate engineer, then to an engineer, and in that time you're going to achieve chartered status, that that's a goal that you've set for yourself within the next five years, and that perhaps just at the end of those five years you'll be looking at a role as a principal engineer, or just about to start a role as a principal engineer. That would be not an unreasonable, but an ambitious career path. If you're applying for a finance role, you might think about what the current finance role is and what's one step above is and how you're going to make the progression between the two. Or if you're not looking to progress, you want to talk about being extremely good and a real expert in that area and how you're going to continually develop over that time to be regarded as the go-to absolute expert in that area. So have a simple plan that talks about the things that are on the good arrow and avoids everything on the bad arrow with a nice focus on development and learning, and you're going to have a strong answer to this. 
The next question they're obviously likely to ask is why work here? Why BE Systems? You could work at lots of different places. What is it about this? And so I'm going to give you lots of things that you might mention. I would strongly recommend that you have a bullet pointed planned out answer to this or even just try writing out an answer. You're not going to memorize it and recite it because that's unreasonable and it would be a bad use of your time. But you just want to have a feeling for what you're actually going to say and the key points. Because if you try and make it up on the spot, it's not going to be a good answer. So things you might want to think about is how does BE Systems stand out? So look at their business and maybe think about three or four things that make them stand out from the competition. You can include that in your answer. Be specific to your role. So what is it about this specific job that you're applying for that you really like? Link it to your academic interests. So what did you study at university? What have you done in your career that links to this particular job and has prepared you for this job and means that this job at BE Systems is such a fantastic match for your knowledge? Link to your experience as well. So think about your previous jobs. How has that set you up for this role? Link to your ambitions. What do you want to achieve? Think about that question we looked at over five years. How will BE Systems help you to achieve your goals in five years and be enthusiastic. If you're enthusiastic, it's gonna make your answer a lot stronger. Things you might want to mention is if you've got military experience, a career with BE Systems might match up with that. That you want to contribute to national security, maybe that's something that you value very highly and you would like to be part of. That you see that there is lots of training available, there's lots of leadership programs, and that that could springboard your career forward. That you'll find the work intellectually stimulating. That you want to join an innovative company. There's a lot of technology that has been developed at the company, and it's very much at the forefront of technology, and you want to be working in a business like that. It's a perfect match for your skills. Explain Once you said, it is a perfect match for my skills, because how is this such a great match for your skills? Say something like you love solving challenging problems, and this is going to be a key part of your role. It's a perfect match for your interests. Link that to your previous study and your personal interests. That you see there's lots of development potential. So for example, you might want to become a chartered engineer, or you're working towards becoming a CFA, for example, if you're in finance, and that BE Systems has programs to support you to do that, that you want to work in a diverse business, that you like to contribute to research, and that you see that there is a long-term career potential here. So feel free to take loads of notes from this slide or even screenshot it. Spend some time planning out an answer and include as many of these ideas as possible. And then if they ask, why do you want to join BE Systems? You're going to have a fantastic, strong, well-planned answer ready to go. And you are going to score more highly on it. And that's how you answer this question. Another top tip and one thing that's worth looking at is they have a careers website that will give you lots of inspiration and they actually have video interviews with people who work at BE Systems discussing their role and they actually say, I joined BE Systems because or the reason I was interested in the job was and they'll give you some inspiration. You can perhaps take some of their answers and include that in yours. Like they said they wanted to join BE Systems because of this and incorporate that into your answer. They often like questions around strengths and weaknesses. So what is your greatest strength? In a good answer, you need to study your role, know what your role involves and what skills they're looking for. Pick a strength that is highly relevant to that specific role and then have something to evidence it. Have an example of when you use that strength, a qualification, a certification, something that proves that this strength is real then be very specific. Don't just pick a very general strength. I have good communication skills. Well, that's great, but it's too general. It doesn't make you stand out. Lots of people have good communication skills, right? And then you have to do something that enhances BE Systems business, that the person interviewing you can immediately say, if I hired someone with that strength, this is what they could do for us. Here's an example. So I've developed strong knowledge of high-speed aerodynamics. If you're applying for a business area that involves high-speed aerodynamics, perhaps you're working on a jet fighter program and you have knowledge of really, really useful aerodynamics that is going to help them be better at that business, that is a great strength to have, very specific. Then here's the evidence. This was the focus of my master's degree thesis, which achieved a first class. So you're saying, I've got strong knowledge of this and here is the proof. Some university professors basically said, your knowledge is brilliant, here's a first class. 
and that backs up that strength. As part of this project, I successfully developed, what did you actually achieve as part of that project? And then you link it to BE system. So this strength is well matched for my role I've chosen to apply for and will enable me to quickly add value to BE systems by and explain how it links to their business. And there's a great answer. So they've picked something really specific that is a high quality strength. They've provided evidence for why that strength is important and proved that they definitely have it and then linked it back to BE systems business. And that's how you plan out a really good answer. So pick one strength that you think is really, really important for their business, and you definitely have that strength, and you've got some evidence of it, plan out an answer. And if they ask, what's your greatest strength, you've got one ready to go. Then they might ask about what your greatest weakness is. So you ought to be reflective, do something to fix your weakness, and make sure it's not essential for your role. This isn't a question where you're looking to score really highly. It's a question where you're looking to survive without doing any damage. So it's getting through it without looking silly or revealing something unpleasant. So you want to say one area I've identified as current weakness and that I consider to be a key focus for my professional development is over time to address this weakness, I hope to. So it's all about, I am aware of this weakness and I'm going to fix it, and I want to develop over time to minimize this weakness. Bad answers is to say that I don't have any because that's showing you're not reflective, you've got no idea about your development needs. Work too hard, detail-orientated, perfectionist, these are cop-out fake answers. Some things you might want to consider is talking about more experience in. So this is something that is not core to your role you're applying for now, but in a future role might be more important. For example, if you're applying for an engineering role and it's going to be all engineering, but you're hoping long-term to move into management, you might talk about getting some more experience in the finance and management side that you're hoping to develop that over the next three, four, five years so that should you take on more responsibility in future, you've got that wider development delegation if you're applying for a non-management role and you're not going to be delegating yet or work-life balance because you may have been working very intensely to get your best qualifications possible and at the start of your career and you're looking to develop a little bit more work-life balance and you are still of course a very hard-working employee so that's what you could talk about this one you will have a greatest weakness ready to go one that is not essential for your role and you can easily talk about what you're going to do to fix it, have that planned out ready, and you're going to survive this question. Now let's look at an example of the tell me about a time question. So a common one that they like is tell me about a time you faced a challenge and how you overcame it. So we'll do this one as a worked example, and then I'll give you a list of other ones that I've seen reported in BE Systems interviews. So a good answer is a substantial obstacle. So if they're asking about, tell me about a time when this happened, pick a really good example, which actually had something substantial in it. That, for example, you had an ambitious target to meet, that you manage professionally um, and you get the best out of people, that shows collaboration and innovation, and that you actually met the end point despite setbacks. So that's a good example. A bad example is where you maybe fix the problem very easily. You were unprofessional or you did something wrong and had to fix it. You don't want to be revealing that in a job interview, that there's a lack of learning. So if something went wrong and you didn't learn anything from it, that's a red flag. That you talk about how it was someone else's fault. So a challenge came up because somebody else was stupid and incompetent and useless and I hated them. And it was all their fault and I hate that person and they're terrible. That's not a very nice thing to talk about in your interview. So don't start blaming it on everyone else. And then you don't want this kind of superhero narrative. Look at me, I saved the day all on my own because that's not going to be believed and it's not going to be credible. Like you had a team that were really struggling to deliver something, but the second you joined it, everything was wonderful and you sailed in there and saved everything. That just doesn't look very credible. And then you must not pick an example in any example where there is failure or a poor outcome. They want to hire people that get results. So anytime you're asked about a situation, you want to pick something where it didn't go disastrously wrong. And even if it was heading initially in the wrong direction, ultimately 
it came to a good outcome. So some examples you might pick for a time when you face the challenge is working to an extremely tight deadline that immediately when you heard it, you thought that's impossible, but you actually managed to achieve it. Where IT failure, so it's not someone's fault, but something else went wrong that you had to learn very quickly. You had to cover for an absent colleague or you had to deliver a very technically challenging project that really stretched you, but you ended up being successful in the end, collaborating with other people, using the knowledge base in your organization to achieve success. Something like that would be a great example. So I definitely have an example ready for this, and I'm gonna give you a list of things that you need to have examples in case they ask about it. So for any question, which is tell me about a time, you use the STAR technique. So situation, task, action, and then result. And every time you're planning out an answer, think this through, and when you're describing any time in an interview, just mentally tick off each of these. The situation is clearly, in this case, what was the challenge? The situation is always, when did this happen? What was it? The task is be clear about what is the goal. Tell them exactly what goal you needed to achieve. Then talk through the action. So what did you actually do? And then the result, explain how you achieved success. And results should always be positive because you're trying to sell yourself as someone that actually gets results. You don't want to go into an interview and talk about, here's a situation I was faced with and here's how I failed and lost the company loads of money. And if you hire me, I'm going to cause disasters everywhere. You want to present yourself as someone who can achieve success because that's what the company is trying to do. And then what you need in a good answer. So you always think about what the success looks like. So they want someone that's solution focused. So they don't want to have finger pointing. You identify the issues and you actually fix it that you maintain high standards. So you don't let standards slip, you don't cut corners. So you're trying to achieve an ambitious goal and you're actually achieving that goal. They want teamwork. So collaborate with others to find solutions. So you're not this hero coming in and saving the day, you're working with other people. You um, offer support and you listen and you collaborate. That you can get the best out of people. So improve the performance of others. Really good answers to tell me about a time questions can often be, when you improve the performance of others and you worked well with other people. And the most important thing of all of these sort of questions is hit the end point. So actually get the job done effectively in spite of all the challenges that you had to overcome. And you want to be clear in the interview about what success you achieved. So in the STAR technique, you've said the task was to do this. Here's all the challenges we faced. And at the end, when you're talking about the R in the STAR, the result, just circle back to the task and say, we achieved it. And then you've got a successful answer. And that's how you deal with those. So there is some ones that that uh, BE systems like to ask about. And these are ones that have been reported in previous interviews. So tell me about a time you demonstrated integrity is a popular one. A time where you've led a team. You've had to make a quick decision with limited information. You've experienced conflict in a project a time that you have failed, managed heavy workload, or you've had to prioritize. So I would have each of these written down and just a hyphen that says an example. Because if you're asked for an example of these and you've got an example ready to go, and these are the ones that have been reported in previous interviews, it's a good idea just to have one ready to go. So take a note of these and make sure you've got a good example ready to go. And also the process of thinking through the example and thinking when you've done these things will mean if you're presented with a new one in the interview, you'll have practiced figuring it out. You'll be able to think up an answer a little bit more quickly. And before we finish, here are some good questions that you might want to ask at the end of a BE Systems interview. So could you please detail the next steps in the recruitment process at BE Systems, as I'm very interested in the role? Can you tell me more about the team you have in my function and exactly how my role could fit in? What originally attracted you to join BE Systems and incorporate their answer in perhaps your previous answer and link it to your motivation? Can you tell me more about the induction and training program for new hires at BE Systems and show a real genuine interest in it? Can you describe how you support new hires to work towards attaining, for example, a CN, CFA, CPA, or some certification that you're really interested in achieving? And then when you finish, offer sincere thanks for the interview, say you look forward to hearing from them, and end in a positive, happy 
and confident way. So I hope this video was helpful to you. I wish you the best of luck in your interview. Please like and subscribe if it was helpful. And finally, thank you very much for watching.